Hey guys, Son of Liberty. Uh, went back and looked at some of the views from my, my channel and the videos I've posted, and prepping your truck got more views than several of my other videos combined. So I wanted to sit down and kind of reiterate a little bit more and expand on things that uh, I actually uh, take into consideration when, quote, prepping your truck. Now, in your case, it could be your car, uh, your vehicle, and with all the mass shootings that have been plaguing our nation here recently, I think it's also too crucial to start to uh, plan ahead, um, carry a medical kit in your vehicle. Uh, you may be new to preparedness, so um, you know you need to start carrying some additional water as well as food in your vehicle. Right now is a very challenging time for a lot of the people that are in the colder states, um, especially up north because of uh, freezing temperatures and such. So uh, just keep that in mind when you're storing water inside of your vehicle. Now, to, uh, to get back to some things, uh, there was several things that I touched on um, on my first video. This, again, is just going to be expanding on that, and I'm going to be um, also, to kind of addressing some um, questions and concerns that I had in the first video. So, one of the things that we talked about before was the um, ham radio. To be able to have some form of communication uh, in a situation to where uh, cellular systems uh, and towers and the network itself is down. So uh, this is just a really good system. Um, I've got about $100 in the entire radio as well as about $75 in the mount. So uh, this just gives me the ability to uh, reach out and connect to people emergency services, be able to monitor the weather, uh, and so forth. All right, too, not sure if you guys can see uh, this drop-down uh, box. A lot of you guys have this in your vehicle. Um, one of the things that I mentioned uh, that I carry with me is a tourniquet. Um, so uh, I got a lot of questions. I got some people that were uh, asking about the uh, the need to have a tourniquet. Uh, well, here's my personal uh, preference on this. Um, I'm going to carry a tourniquet because I feel like that in um, in a life or death situation, if I cannot stop a bleeding of of a wound um, or some other type of, of injury, I at least have this. I can at least say that I've done everything in my power uh, to be able to save that person. So, or it could be my own life. Now, in my circle of friends of law enforcement, firefighters, uh, you know, just military, okay? Um, I've talked to a lot of people where tourniquets have been used to save lives. With the recent bombing in Boston, with the recent 10-year um, war, actually the war that's still continuing on, we have enough evidence to prove that tourniquets save lives, okay? Um, so just because you apply a tourniquet uh, does not mean that that person is going to lose that limb. However, you do need to make sure that you get ample training on tourniquet application, okay? So with that being said, I'm not going to go into the uh, subject any further. Uh, in addition to what I carry inside of this uh, drop-down box uh, is I also carry uh, this kit. I'll give you a quick look at it here. Pick this up off of uh, actually Amazon. You know, I think it was like fourteen dollars. I decided, hey, I roll the dice. I've spent a lot uh, more money on you know worse items, so I thought, hey, it's worth a shot. But when I got this thing, it was very very bulky. Uh, and so what I end up doing it is I end up very carefully cutting it, um, and then reorganizing the items inside of it so it would stay uh, flatter. And then I resealed it with my vacuum sealer. And what this does is uh, when it's in my back pocket, it actually just looks just like a wallet. Um, so that that way, anytime I'm going into, especially like a large area, um, going to taking the, the, a show, going to a show with my kiddos, right? Um, there are areas that will wand you to make sure that you don't have any weapons. So I will throw, make sure that this is always with me in large areas. That way I at least have something to be able to um, respond uh, uh, to a medical type of emergency. Now, so uh, one thing to mention is no matter if you're in the front seat of the vehicle or in the rear, uh, you have access to this uh, to this compartment here, okay? 
Um, also, as well as the medical bag, the one that I'm going to show you in just a second, of course, it is within arm's reach of anywhere that you are in the vehicle. All right. So let me also touch on another subject uh, when it comes to fire. Uh, if you're responding to a, a vehicle, um, you, you know, space is limited in the vehicle because of the amount of, uh, you know, really just the lack of room that I have uh, when it comes to uh, being able to keep a, a fire extinguisher, okay? I have been the, uh, the first uh, responder to a scene uh, to where a uh, vehicle has started to catch on fire. Uh, it luckily extinguished itself uh, and went out, uh, but in this situation, a fire extinguisher be can become in very handy and even save somebody's life. So let me show you what I've done with mine. So the fire extinguisher that I had, uh, I just keep some extra tools uh, and stuff underneath here. But what I've done is I took my fire extinguisher and I placed Velcro. Um, sure, yeah, you can see it right there. I placed Velcro, the male portion of Velcro around that, um, and then the female Velcro on the carpet itself. And so uh, it's, it's very secure, but if I want to, just yank really hard and it will come out of there. But that way it keeps it secure and it's actually safer here where it is because uh, before I had it in the back seat uh, and if I was involved in let's say a rollover accident or a really violent car wreck, um, this actually could cause additional harm to uh, occupants inside the vehicle. So let's take a look at some of the other things that I keep. All right, let me just scan through here real quick and just give you a quick look. And uh, we're gonna go over each item here. Um, I always make sure to keep a extra form of communication with me, uh, especially when I'm mobile. This gives me that ability. I've disconnected the battery and put a Velcro tie around it to make sure that it's not constantly draining my battery. It's just a bow thing. You can pick these up very cheaply. Um, also, too, as well, I've got an extra uh, charger for it that I can use in the uh, cigarette lighter adapter. I also picked one of these up at a truck station. It's a 100-watt power inverter. I thought it would be uh, very beneficial excuse me, very beneficial. Uh, this actually is, is really good for uh, when we're on long road trips. Uh, the kids can actually use this and plug some of their devices into that uh, as well. So that comes in pretty handy in those types of situations. Um, here I've got one of those buff neck gaiters, uh, provides UV protection, but the primary reason I put this in here is because of forest fires in the area. Um, unfortunately, because of careless people, we have some forest fires and something like this to be able to, uh, you can douse this with water, uh, put that over your, your face uh, and be able to provide you a little bit better ability to breathe if you need to get through a uh, situation uh, or an area very quickly. Um, here, self-explanatory, if you don't know what an MRE is, um, you need to uh, look into those. Uh, now you may be new into prepping, uh, these are just uh, especially great if you're just going to keep them in your trunk of your vehicle. Just make sure to rotate them out periodically um, and eat them uh, as such. So here I've got a 511. Uh, it's almost like a shoulder sling bag. It's one of those bags that provides you quick access to a handgun. Um, I got this because I can throw this over my shoulder if I need to, uh, to leave my vehicle. Uh, and it's also too very discreet to some extent. Uh, people like me and you uh, may recognize something like that and what it is truly, uh, but the general population is not. Um, so I keep this in the vehicle uh, anytime I go out of town. Now, uh, we've got some extra batteries, extra ammo. Uh, always keep a good pair of gloves inside the vehicle as well because you never know what you're going to be doing or what kind of situation you may find yourself in. Here we've got a drywall wrecking tool. Um, I just picked this up because I thought, hey, this thing could come in very, very handy uh, depending on a situation. That's basically got a spike on the end, um, and so I usually keep that in my truck uh, at all times. Here, pick this up at a gun show. Uh, this is a parachute flare. I thought, you know, if there was ever a time, a situation, uh, maybe if I knew people were looking for me, I could use this. Let me come in beneficial. So, also too, you need to be careful uh, with this though. They can uh, start fire, so that's something to keep that in mind. Here I've got what's called a Job Smart, um, basically a lock, uh, a lock eater if you want to call it. Uh, this thing's pretty cool. Um, it, it'll cut through quite a bit of stuff and it's foldable and that's what I liked about it the most. Um, just very quickly, I'll do this with my hand locks into place and there you go ready to go 
Um, also, too, I keep a um, an extra ham radio antenna uh, just in case something happens to the antenna on my truck. If it was to break uh, from debrisment or something like that from a storm, uh, I keep an extra one so that I can always stay um, up on communications. Gore-Tex rain jacket with the uh, insert. Um, always keep my bug out bag. Yes, this thing has been through literally hell, uh, but it is still going strong. No need to replace it. It's still working just fine. So uh, always have a, an extra set of uh, rain gear, complete set inside of there. And this is also going to contain all of my uh, general seven to, uh, or excuse me, three to four days of equipment as well as my tent and everything else that I would need to um, survive in a situation. That is my bug out bag. Never leave home without a wool blanket, military grade wool blanket. I have some, uh, just some general utility rope that you can pick up at probably any hardware store. Um, there is my advanced medical bag. My last one got stolen, so uh, I went with a lot darker color that blends into the vehicle a lot better. Um, so um, hopefully that one won't be seen as easily. Anytime I go out of town, I always make sure to bring some kind of long gun. Uh, in this situation, I just happen to bring out my 870. Sometimes I'll take it, sometimes I'll take an AR. Again, it just depends on the situation where I'm going. Now, in the back, um, that dry bag there is one I picked up at Walmart. I have a complete extra change of clothes, um, as well as an uh, extra pair of boots, uh, additional water, I keep an extra pair of socks inside of there. Over here, uh, what you can actually see is a, a gas funnel as well as a siphon hose. Um, you never know, you know, if you're trying to get back home to your family when something like that may become uh, beneficial. Uh, and then there in the back you can see um, I actually keep uh, basically just any type of tools that I feel like that I may need to work on my vehicle uh, in an emergency situation. So um, just give you another quick scan here. Uh, again, um, I cannot carry a firearm uh, where I work at, so uh, I can only use uh, and carry these firearms when I um, are out on the weekends or if I'm going out of town, okay? So let's step over here. Alright, so uh, one of the uh, things I want to address real quickly, um, if you've watched the first video prepping your truck, then you'll uh, recognize this IFAC. Um, I keep this IFAC stored up underneath here, under, uh, under the dash. Um, <clears throat> it can be reached with your feet um, uh, if you needed to, but that was not the uh, purpose uh, for me storing it there. A lot of people were making comments, you know, it's in a crash zone. Uh, if you're the only occupant, you're not going to be able to get to it. Uh, well, this is not the medical uh, kit that was designed to take care of myself uh, in a vehicle. This kit was designed so that um, I can grab this um, without having to take my entire trauma bag if I'm going um, to the uh, shooting range and I'm going to be taking this and, and putting it beside my actual shooting lane um, or on the bench where I'm actually shooting at, okay? Uh, it was it was actually placed here specifically for the reason to prevent other people from looking inside the truck and seeing it. That's all. Uh, it was just a nice little hidden compartment uh, or an area that I could hide the uh, IFAC at uh, that uh, it's uh, out of sight. So uh, that was the main reason why I posted it there. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to address that issue very quickly. All right, guys, thanks. All right, guys, so this concludes this video. Again, I hope that uh, you guys found something that would be beneficial to you or you're within your circle of friends and family. Uh, whether you started preparedness uh, journey yesterday or you've been doing this for 20 years, uh, hopefully you found something that was beneficial to you. So anyway, guys, until the next video, stay safe.